I'm just going to say it. Kyle Busch is the most entertaining thing in NASCAR right now. He is brash. He has no filter, and he's going to tell you exactly what's on your mind. Really, he's the prototypical NASCAR driver. Love him or hate him, he is the guy who generates headlines. He generates ink, he generates press, and he generates interest. And uh, this most recent thing is going to be something that I think is going to generate a lot of that. And case in point, for that generation of interest, here we are in May, just about to start the true ramp up for the Indianapolis 500, Indy 500 month on my channel, and I'm sitting in front of my camera about to talk about a Monday rainout race at Dover. That, my friends, is the Kyle Busch effect. But what are we talking about specifically? Well, apparently after the race, Kyle Busch had a profanity-laden rant about the package, the NASCAR rules package specifically. And it's not the first time he's come out and said some uh, things about it. Obviously, right before the season started, he had the, the famous no skill required quote that we covered. And here we are once again with Kyle Busch coming out and saying, look, the package is no good. Now, here's the thing. I'm not making this video just because he said that. I actually am making this video because I kind of disagree with him if he's specifically talking about Dover because while I didn't get to see the entire race, it is a Monday after all, and I'm a busy man, but uh, it didn't look like that bad of a race. It looked fairly competitive. There was some good racing between Bowman and Truex, and sure, Truex ended up winning the race by something like 10 seconds, but... I mean, gaps at the end of the race, I've never really considered a indicator of whether or not a race is good. And certainly, you know, only 10 cars being on the lead lap or whatever, that's not really an indicator either. Go back to some of the classic races in history and look at the box score before you make that claim. But what did Kyle Busch have to say specifically? Let's read this quote that came from Twitter. This reporting comes from Dustin Albino. This package sucks. No effing question about it. It's terrible. All I can do is bitch about it and fall on deaf ears. And we'll come back with the same thing in it in the fall. Now again, this quote seems to specifically talk about the race at Dover. And I didn't think the, again, I don't think the race at Dover was that bad. Now, if Kyle Busch, and it's weird that he came out with this statement today. I know a lot of people have come out and said, oh, Kyle Busch is just saying this because he didn't win. Then again, I would point everybody to that Bristol race that he won and then immediately got out of the car and said the COT sucked. By the way, he was right about that. I'm pretty sure history has shown that most people didn't like that car, the drivers didn't like that car, and fans a lot of times left in droves because of it. So here he is saying it again, this time after he's lost a race, not really been all that competitive. And... I don't know. NASCAR had a really good race at Talladega. I thought it was pretty decent at Dover. Uh, some of the early season races, absolutely they sucked. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I will just come out and say it right there. There's definitely fundamental flaws in this package, no doubt about it. But I don't really think it's manifest in tracks where you've got this really high horsepower. I know there was higher corner speeds this time. And in fact, the lap speeds at Dover actually increased by something like 10 miles an hour over the track record. Uh, they were still something like 20 miles an hour off the IRL when they ran there at like 185, but still 165 miles an hour around a, a banked one mile oval. That's nothing to sneeze at, but they were running with 750 horsepower at this particular race. Uh, they were using the, I guess it would be a larger tapered spacer rather than a smaller taper spacer. I think that's how that works. I think it's the same way as a restrictor plate works. I think the real flaw is in the super high downforce, even though they're running that at every track, super low horsepower, the 550 horsepower package, where it's really clear that clean air is, is such a key that, like, for example, Kyle Larson at Atlanta, he was unable to drive through the field despite having the very best car. As soon as he was back in traffic, he, there was nowhere for him to go. But Kyle Busch isn't the only one coming out against this. In fact, one of the team owners that many people who are the ardent defenders of everything that NASCAR does and also NASCAR themselves came out and said, hey, look, these, uh, these rules are here to uh, help the small teams. Well, let's hear from one small team owner and what he thinks about it. 
This comes from Bob Levine of Levine Family Racing. Of course, you will know them as a Toyota team, and not only a Toyota team, they are a Gibbs-associated team. Therefore, the car that won in the hands of Martin Truex Jr. is theoretically the same equipment that they have. So you would think that they would be happy that the package gave them an advantage. But no, Bob Levine had this to say. Let me second Kyle Busch's statement. This package sucks has nothing to do with where he finished. And that's actually a response to uh, our good friend D. Godfather Moody talking about uh, the fact that, oh, well, Kyle Busch just lost. Yeah. Again, this was the thing that we always heard, all right? So they're going to reduce the horsepower. They're going to up the downforce. They're going to make it a lot more like a restrictor plate race in that small teams have a better opportunity to run closer to the front or get more positions or get closer to the front. But here's a small team, and yes, I'm well aware they're Gibbs affiliated. They've got theoretically the best equipment they could possibly have. But this is exactly the kind of team that I think was being used as a justification for this package. And yet, here we are, Bob Levine saying, yeah, it sucks. It's no good. Matt DiBenedetto, his driver, has said the same thing. But I know some people don't have the highest opinion of Benedetto and his feedback. But that's why we talk about Kyle Busch. That's why Kyle Busch is kind of the guy that everybody points to and says, look, he was right about the COT. He's saying the similar, almost exactly the same things about this package. So should we listen to Kyle Busch? And I, don't, I mean, this is the thing as well, is that you start thinking actions detrimental to stock car racing. I would hope that NASCAR, like I said in the beginning, you would hope that NASCAR would not be that quick on the trigger with this because, again, I think, like I mentioned in the beginning, Kyle Busch produces a lot of ink. He makes a lot of headlines. He gets a lot of people talking. And if you silence him, even if he's not, even if he will forevermore toe the party line, he will be significantly less interesting for it. So because of that, let's read a couple more tweets from some other well-respected figures in NASCAR, talking specifically about Kyle Busch and what uh, his temperament is and how they feel about it. So we've got Mark Martin, and while he wasn't a NASCAR champion, I think there are many people or aren't many people who would deny that he's one of the best that there's ever been. I'm glad we have Kyle Busch in NASCAR. He has so much talent and can get away with saying what he thinks, kind of like Tony Stewart could do. We could use a couple more like that in our sport. To which, Brad Keselowski, and by the way, if you've ever watched the NASCAR on Fox broadcast, you will have heard undoubtedly how much uh, Brad Keselowski and, and Kyle Busch don't really like each other. But he says, agree, it's a good thing for a driver that can be true to himself. Also careful to understand how fragile everything is right now. So that's where we get to the ominous... Uh, actions detrimental to stock car racing thing. We know Steve O'Donnell has responded to Kyle Busch before on social media. Uh, there was a big drama again right before Daytona about this. Will they find him? I hope not, but this seems like he's starting to get closer and closer to that line where eventually NASCAR is probably going to smack him down. And um, I, I don't, again, I think that's the wrong decision for NASCAR. I don't 100% agree with what Kyle Busch has to say, but I will defend his right to say it because not only is it good that the real information is out there and there are people willing to say it, like Mark Martin has just said, but it's good that there's this discussion. This discussion is good for the sport. Consider the Kentucky Derby for a second, and I'm sorry I'm going to be another one of those people talking about horse racing, but I guarantee you that the next horse race will have a higher TV rating because of that controversy that happened at the Derby. And the next Kentucky Derby is going to have a huge TV rating because everybody is going to tune in to see what happens next. And so this kind of controversy, this kind of discussion is perfect, especially for a sport like NASCAR, which seems to thrive on this kind of stuff. So, Kyle Busch, keep talking. I'm loving it. I'm enjoying it. It's entertaining. And that's something that I think a lot of people will agree that NASCAR needs. So thank you guys so much for watching. What did you think about Kyle Busch's uh, statements? Do you think he's going to get fined? I don't know. It'll be an interesting discussion. We'll see on Wednesday, right? That's when they, they usually uh, dish out the penalties. Who knows? Uh, we'll see you in the next video. Subscribe for more NASCAR and motorsport content.
And Kyle Busch, what else can you say? He makes me make NASCAR videos in the month of May. That's something special.